if you're gonna do a fast that's more than like 24 hours, I think there's value in not drinking coffee. If you're gonna put yourself through the, the effort of fasting more than 24 hours, like I would personally okay. probably wean from coffee like I did on the five day water fast. Just because it's so much, it's so, what? I haven't had coffee, Yeah, I'm just saying, it's so much work what you're doing. I mean, I'm not against drinking coffee while you're fasting, but if you were gonna put in that much hard work to fast for more than 24 hours, then you might as well wean yourself from coffee a few days before. Just a thought, whatever. How to get your kids started on, that? that's like, Besides how many pairs of prescription glasses do I own? That's the biggest question I get. There's, they start from the day they're born. You try to have a natural birth, you try to breastfeed your kid, and you start trying to do tummy time. Why do you want a natural birth? Because you need that kid's head to come out of the mom's vagina. Ideally, you do a home birth. You don't want anyone tampering with your kid. You just want your kid born and then he does the tummy crawl up to his mom. He's covered in all the juices. You don't bathe him for a couple months. That's not hippie shit. It's just the way, if I'm just telling you, that's the right way to do it. And then you breastfeed the kid and you feed the kid on demand as much as you want and you keep the kid in your bed and you don't listen to any other nonsense. This is just like, I'm just telling you, I'm not saying the other ways are like bad, but if your question is, is how do you get your kids started on the journey that my kids are on? That's what you do. You have the kid at home vaginally you don't listen to any of the fucking nonsense doctors tell you or the shit people tell you that argues your limitations you breastfeed the shit out of your kid your wife doesn't drink alcohol or caffeine or smoke or any of that she eats well and you get your kid up and running you you, you don't even you don't do anything to your kid basically except feed them for the first two months no baths no nothing then you in there somewhere, you start giving the kid tummy time. You put a blanket on the floor and you start putting your kid down on its tummy a lot. And of course the kid's gonna cry. You set a timer for 10 minutes. You try to um, just take a lot of deep breaths and manage the, 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 the struggle of listening to your child cry. And then after 10 minutes, you pick your kid up. Anytime you're not holding your kid and loving on your kid and feeding your kid, you put your kid down. You do as much tummy time as you can. Why do you do tummy time? Because Struggle is what causes adaptation. If you don't want to be on your tummy and you're crying, you will try to push and get off your tummy. It's CrossFit level one stuff. Struggle leads to adaptation. You put your fingers in your kid's hands. Your kids will be holding a tight grip. Often you stick your finger in there and you offer your kid resistance. You pull on your kid, you tug on your kid, you drag them along the ground parallel. You don't lift them up and put a weird arch in their back or anything like that. You just kind of just let them feel that resistance. You just pull with your hand. You hang rings in your house in a place where your kid always is. So your kid can see the rings. Always see the rings, always see the rings. Eventually your kid's hands will get strong enough so that you can just put your finger in their grip. You slowly pick them up. They'll come to a stand and then you carry them. You do that every single time, like a meditation practice, not like a meditation practice. It is a meditation practice. It's called discipline and structure and boundaries. And you do that and you teach your kid that if they want to be held, they have to hold on to your finger and they'll be able to articulate their wrist, their elbow and their shoulder. Contract, articulate, ask Kelly Star what the right word is. And slowly you'll be able to pick your kid up like that you'll see how strong your kid gets from all the tummy time your kid will be a rolling and sitting up savage then your kid will start crawling and your kid will see those rings and start making swipes at the rings keep the rings just above their head because you don't want just above because you don't want the ring swinging and hitting your kids but you want your kid to make valiant efforts and and set your kid up for success to be able to grab those rings do not encourage your kid to walk. What does that mean? He can go ahead and couch surf. I'm not saying that if they stand up and are leaning against stuff or walls and walking, um, that you should discourage that. What I'm saying is, is having things like walkers or trying to get them to walk or rewarding them for walking is pointless. They're gonna walk their entire life. Crawling is epic. If you are able to make a world-class crawler, you will have some of the greatest enjoyment in your life. 
what do I mean by that? First of all, you have to enjoy, if you want your kids to be like my kids and get started like my kids, you have to love watching them. You have to love watching every degree of growth, every smile, every like hand gesture. You have to basically, your reward is watching your kids grow. It's like, a, it's like having plants. You just, it's awesome watching plants grow. Every morning when you wake up and you look, oh my God, it has a new bud. Oh my God, it has a new branch. Oh my God, it has a new leaf. It's like that with kids. You give your kids that attention just non-stop. Because why? Because it's enjoyable. What, what's the kid get in return? I don't know. It's just what I did. And my kids seem to flourish with that kind of just quiet attention. Just watching them, smiling at them, letting them know that I support their, um, their efforts. So now you have... So then finally when your kid starts walking... By then, he'll be holding on to the rings. He'll be doing all sorts of weird stuff on the rings. It'll trip you out. And they'll start learning body control. They'll start learning grip strength. They'll start do, making the attempts to actually hang to get their feet off the ground. That takes, I think, months, as I recall. I think Avi first grabbed the rings and pulled himself up at eight months. I mean, and it was scary. It was hard not to intervene because it, it, it looked like he was, he was gonna slip off and fall. And I think he did slip off and fall many, many times. There's videos in my Instagram somewhere. So then once your kid can walk, you just need to walk, walk, walk your child. The coffee shop's three blocks away, it takes an hour to get there, have your kid walk the entire way. And basically it's just like walking a dog. You're just walking your kid and you're enjoying watching them walk, you're enjoying watching them fall. They'll, they will fall on a walk to the coffee shop 500 times every time for a year. And every time you pick them up, you're taking away one of their burpees. So you don't pick them up. You don't say you're okay. You don't say, are you okay? Just shut the fuck up. At most, if they were to hurt themselves, I would say something like, ooh, I'm sorry, I love you. I don't rub it, I don't do any of that crap. Maybe I put my cold hand on their forehead and kiss them on the neck. T tons of affection, by the way. Tons and tons and tons of endless affection for the kids. You're kissing your kids and loving them and putting their hand, your hand up their shirt and just everything you can nonstop. You don't want to put shoes on them because you don't want the shoes getting between them and the ground. You wouldn't give your grandma stilts, would you? That's what it's tantamount to. You have a child who just learned how to walk and now you're putting something between their feet and the ground. In the most gentle words I can say, idiocy. High tops, anything that would stop flexion of the ankle. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> if you just think about it for two seconds, you see the idiocy in it. Those, your child is not cold for the most part. Those onesies that have feet, oh, look at this. Wow, just right there in the middle of the garden. Um, if you put um, those onesies on them that have those feet on them, just cut the feet off, pointless. Your child, they're ovens. These kids are ovens. Uh, and once your kid starts walking, your kid will start finding steep driveways. Those used to scare the shit out of me. Your child will find stairs, your neighbor's stairs. They'll find all sorts of stuff and they'll start being covered with bruises, scrapes, cuts, blood, all that stuff because of how much they fall and because they're trying to take their game to the next level. Their game, their ability to take their game to the next level is, is runs parallel with your ability to be able to watch your kids struggle. So if you're good at watching your kids struggle, and you somehow enjoy that process or are able to take deep breaths, then your kid will flourish. If you're not, every time you assist your kid, you'll be setting your kid back in more than one way. Not only will you be taking that opportunity from them, but they will expect that kind of help. There is no homeostasis in raising your kid. You're either making your kid better, faster, stronger, smarter, or you're making your kid weaker, dumber, slower. So you have to remember that with everything that you do. Now, I'm not saying that you should ruin your life or the kid's life or your grandparents' life because there, there are going to be people who run over to them and pick them up when they fall. And um, with my first kid, that was kind of hard to watch. But then you learn... Sorry, I'm looking for this plant. I want to stake it so no one, no dog runs over it or steps on it. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to watch, you know, like the grandparents maybe like give or someone give your kid a piece of candy or pick your kid up when they fall or do something that you don't think is productive. But remember, you can only control yourself and your interaction with your kid. So you just do everything perfect and you be the example. 
So that's how you get your kids started. A really, really healthy, healthy birth, tons of breast milk, um, tons of time with mama, then lots of tummy time, setting the timer if you, if you can't tolerate the crying, non-stop watching your kid and enjoying the growth. Um, let them become world-class crawlers, then hang rings in the house. Rings are so important because they make your kids' hands strong and they teach crazy, crazy core awareness. How does that happen? Because they grab the rings with their hands and then their feet come in front of them, in front of their midline. And when you do that, your whole core gets tight. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and try to hang and swing from some rings. So your wife or your spouse or your husband won't let you put rings in the house. Well, they're making a mistake. Just make it happen. It has to happen. And that's how you get started. And then just all that walking, they will develop their skills while they're walking. What do I mean by that? Develop their skills. They will start jumping off of curbs. They will start pulling on like railing and hanging from railing. You just need to take your kid everywhere, keep them out of the carrier and keep them out of the stroller as much as you can. Make your kid your priority. Make your kid's movement your priority. And that's how it works. That's how you get started.